Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Simply Alicia A. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. So today we're going to be talking about pothos care. For anyone who knows me, knows that I love pothos. I'm crazy over them, and um, that's another story. <laughs> so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a few key tips that you need to know when it comes to taking care of your pothos. So um, let's first give a tiny brief, brief history about what pothos are. And um, I might maybe put a list on the screen up here um, but uh, pothos are like a indoor tropical vining plant. I cannot say the botanical or horticultural name, so I'll try to put that up there as well. And um, they are very easy to take care of, even beginners. This is one of the number one top rated plants for beginners to take care of, to have in their homes. So um, yeah, let's get started with our first care tip. All right, so the first care tip is going to be the soil. Now the soil can consist of um, two or three different parts. Um, I personally use miracle Grow, and that has the, the grow enhancers in it, and it also has a mixture of perlite. You wanna make sure that your pothos have well-draining soil. They are tropical plants, however, they do not like to sit in water. They can get root rot just as easily as other plants as well. So um, you can use any type of um, portions or measurements that you like um, pertaining to your, your uh, atmosphere in your home or your atmosphere where you live. There are different types of uh, atmospheres and moisture levels and things like that for plants. So some people who live in a more tropical climate can actually get away with a lot more perlite in their soil versus someone who lives in a, um, I guess, a drier, hot climate. They would need to add a little bit more moisture. So I would say whatever your region is, that's what type of soil you would pick. Um, I live in Minnesota, so we have a varying climate. I call it a roller coaster climate. So you can have very extremely cold and dry weather, very extremely hot and moist weather. So it all depends on the year, the time of year, and it all depends on the uh, atmosphere as well. So you can use whatever type of potting soil depending on your, your region. I use miracle Grow with perlite, and depending on what time of year, sometimes I'll add cocoa core, sometimes I won't, and then of course I'll add a little bit of compost. And um, depending on where you are will depend on the type of soil. But basic all around for the basic, basic care, well-draining soil, make sure you add perlite, and make sure that when you do uh, plant your pot that you're, um, pay attention to the time of year that you're planting your pot and that will depend on your soil as well. Okay, you guys, so uh, care tip number two it's going to be lighting. Now, I will put a disclaimer out there. I am not an expert. I am nowhere near an expert. I don't have a botanical license, which I really think I wanna get one, but I am not an expert, so please, please do more research. If you happen to watch this video looking for Pothos Care, I am only going off my experience. I've been around Pothos for over 30 plus years, so I, I'm very um, uh, well known about Pothos. I know a lot about them. However, I'm not an expert. So uh, yeah, if you need more research, please do more research because don't please don't just go off of what I say. <laughs> so care tip number two is lighting. Now this one, um, this one is, 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 is a tricky one to get because um, pothos are a medium to, not low, but medium to low light house plant. However, they can withstand bright and sometimes um, direct light, direct sunlight. Now, pause one second before you say, oh my gosh, no way, the pothos can never receive direct sunlight. 
Um, that is true. <laughs> However, like I said, from my experience now, um, you definitely cannot put your plant in direct sunlight, especially during the summer months, the growing season months. You should not put your pothos in direct midday to late evening sunlight because the rays are too intense and that can burn your plant. However, like I said, from my experience, I have been able to put my pothos in direct sunlight, but it was for two in two different ways. Um, the first one was the morning sun. So most plants can withstand the morning sun because the rays are not as intense and the rays are not as strong and they can take the direct sunlight. And um, the second one is around sunset. And those two are a lesser intense light for your pothos. So I, I have been putting my uh, my pothos out in the sunset light when it's orange, when the color of the sunset is like an orangish reddish. It's still sunlight, but it's not the direct burning sun. Now also very important, you have to pay attention to the time of year that you put your plants in the sunlight because during the growing season, so early spring and the summer months, you want to be very careful about the type of sunlight your plants get because that's the way, that's the uh, time of year, of course, we know where the rays are more intense, the, the sun is higher and the sky is more direct. Now, during the fall and winter months, you want to be very careful during the fall because the rays are still intense as well, so you need to be careful with that. However, during the winter months, I have my plants in a southern facing window and they do get direct sunlight. The rays are not as intense because the sun, of course, is lower in the sky, I believe, and it's further away. And so the um, they can still get burned, however. Now, don't don't exclude that. They can still get burned. However, it's not as the rays are not as intense. So lighting can play a tricky role. You have to know where you are. Um, like what side of your house your plants can go on, what time of year it is, and the time of day. That's what my experience is. And um, I've burned my plants a couple of times in the past years of me having them. One was letting them, putting them out too early in the afternoon, and it was like maybe in the growing season, so it was late summer, midsummer, and it was like four or five o'clock. The, the, the sun is still out and it's still hot, so I burned a couple of my plants. I learned my lesson. And then in the growing season, I mean the end of fall, I burned one of my philodendrons by mistake because even though the sun was uh, still semi-high in the sky, it's fall so it's starting to go lower and the sun rays were still too intense. So you have to be, you have to be um, aware of, like I said, what time of year, what time of day, what season it is. You have to be aware of all of that. Um, these pothos can actually grow in low light as well. It's not recommended, but they can grow. They still grow. But the optimal growth you will receive is if you do give them bright, indirect sunlight. And um, yeah, that's that's how they can. That's how you can achieve growth with them receiving bright, indirect sunlight. So the basic care, the basic care for lighting for pothos would be medium to medium bright sunlight for beginners. If you're advanced like myself, you'll know the highlight and direct light is possible. You just have to be very careful and be aware of what it is that you're doing. So let's move on to care tip number three. So care tip number three is watering. Now this is the biggest one that a lot of people may have questions about because some people may overwater, which is the main killer of um, house plants and some may underwater which is the second killer <laughs> of a lot of house plants so to get the watering right for pothos from my experience like I said I'm not an expert from my experience now it also too depends on the season and it also depends on your home so for me my experience like I said I live in Minnesota and um, we have the roller coaster temperatures, the roller coaster weather. So right now we're in the middle of winter time. Plants, ma majority of plants are dormant in the winter time. Uh, pothos are semi one of those plants. They still grow, they still give off new leaves, 
but there is not as fast and we all know that when a plant is growing it needs water um, but however it all depends on how much water it needs so from my experience with my pothos it depends on the pot size so um, let's say for instance here I have this pothos here it's really not a pothos but we'll get into that a little bit later um, I have this pothos here in a about a four inch pot but then the material of the pot is different as well and so um, I also have some in bigger pots here same material and also I have some in pots like this plastic material so it all depends on the material as well it's very tricky with with plants but pothos will give you a telltale sign of when they're thirsty no matter what particular pot you have them in and what size pot you have them in pothos are one of the plants that will give you a telltale sign of when they're thirsty and the telltale sign from my experience is when a pothos is thirsty is they will wilt everyone who knows who has pothos know that they will wilt um, I also have noticed the texture of the leaves will change so when you touch a pothos, the pothos has like a, not a rubbery, but a, a particular feel to them. When the pothos is thirsty, it will wilt. And also the texture of the leaves will change, of course, because there's no water in the leaves. It'll get a softer, more pliable, or however you say that, feel to it. That's one of the signs that you can use to water your pothos, that, to know that your, your pothos needs water. Now the amount of water, like I said, depends on your particular pot. So if you have a small pot, we know that smaller pots dry out a lot faster. So you may be watering your pothos a lot, uh, a lot more often than you would if it was in a bigger pot. The frequency that you water your plants as well. It all depends on, again, how your pot size, maybe your growing medium, maybe the atmosphere in your home, so and, and also the season. So during those, the winter months, um, you may slow down on your watering. And when I say slow down, I mean you may only water maybe every two weeks, maybe every three weeks. Um, in, in the summertime, you may water every, honestly, I want to say every four to six seven days you may be watering that's what my experience was but it also depends on your region because some people may have cold summers some people may have really super hot dry summers some people ha may have tropical summers like we do we have the tropical summers um, so it all depends on how much moisture is in the atmosphere and how much water your plant uses and it also depends on the amount of leaves on the plant because we know that the more leaves a plant has a tropical plant has the more water it needs the more growth that the plant does the more water that it needs so basic care basic tip for watering would be just look for the telltale signs of your pothos drooping like this instead of standing up straight it'll droop and then feel the texture of the leaves as well that's a telltale sign of watering I can't give you an exact time I can't give you an exact regimen on when to water just know those are the telltale signs of your pothos needing water now your pothos is very drought tolerant as well so if you forget to water them they may look like they are completely dead and gone like almost shriveled up but you give them some water give them some time and they will spring back to life that's how vigorous and how strong pothos are so let's move on to the next number four will be fertilizing now a lot of people say do I fertilize my plant should I fertilize my plant um, I, I can I will say yes and I will say no and the reason why I say both is my very first experience with pothos for the first 30 something years I never really knew anything about um, fertilizers like I said I'm just actually getting you guys have heard that so you can see that in my other videos um, so I never used po uh, I never used fertilizer but my plants grew just fine without it the reason why I say yes is because now that I have learned about fertilizer I've been using fertilizer on the majority of all of my pothos now and there are different types of fertilizers you have the miracle grow which is the um, the liquid or the powder fertilizer those are synthetic and then you have also your natural fertilizers your homemade your organic fertilizers which is what I do and I make my own compost 
And if you want to check out my own compost or my own fertilizer, um, go ahead and check out my video of my um, compost bin, my balcony compost bin. And you can turn compost into fertilizer. And um, you can use that as well. And um, other people use other forms of fertilizer like fish fertilizer I just learned that you can use your fish water if you have an aquarium you can use your fish water I don't know about the salt tank fish waters but I know your fresh water or your like I have a a Chinese fighting fish I forget the name of it but um you can use the you can use that particular water you can use fish fertilizers um, the potency of some of the synthetic fertilizers, some people use 10, 10, 10. Um, I wouldn't really use that because that's a little too strong for your house plants, but you can always dilute it. And that's what I do with my miracle Grow. I dilute it. Um, there are different types of fertilizers. I will Google that and um, see. You know, it depends on your pot size. You don't want to burn. If you put this too strong fertilizer on your plants, you can burn the roots. And you can also burn the foliage. And that's not what you want to do. So, um, yes, you can fertilize your plant babies. You just have to be very careful on the type of fertilizer that you use. Okay, so care tip number five, repotting. Um, this one is also a, 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 a kind of a tough one to come by because most of your plant babies will be satisfied in the pots that they're in. However, you can repot them. But it all depends on if they really need to be repotted. Now, for me, some of the telltale signs that I can remember of having to repot my plant babies, especially my pothos, are um, when you you water them and they still are droopy. Um, also, when you have had them in the same pot for over a period of time, so for me, maybe over a year to a year and a half, maybe two years, um, then I know it's time for some fresh soil and it's time for to them for them to stretch their roots out. Another sign would be that um, the leaves are turning brown, like they're not it's not getting enough water. No matter how much you water, it's not getting enough water. That could be that um, the plant, like the soil from the plant has gone has been washed away. And so now that the water is just basically running through through the roots and out, out of the bottom. Um, another sign is that you have um, roots coming out of the bottom of the plant. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to urgently repot it, but that is a sign to say, hey, you know, I have um, uh, roots coming out the bottom. It's time. To, it, it's possible that it's time to repot. So one way you can check is um, from what I've seen is when I have a plant that I purchased from the store and I look at the size of the plant and maybe the plant is like, I say this big, the plant is maybe this big. So this is a lot of foliage and the, the, the leaves are really big, right? And then I pull the pot up and I fill the pot and I go, the pot is too light. And it's not because of the water, it's too light. I'll pull it out and the roots are like compacted and, in, and grown into a circle. That's a sign that yes, it's time to repot because it has become uh, bound in the pot. And um, you can just take and when you when it's time to repot, you can just take and kind of lightly, very lightly pull the, some of the roots and loosen up some of the roots and then put them in a, a size pot that's no bigger than two inches. So I wanna say if you have like this one here, this is a four inch, um, I really wouldn't put this in a six inch pot, which would be this size right here. I really wouldn't put it in a six inch pot. Maybe for smaller plants, I would say go one size up, so maybe a five inch. Or if you want to save yourself the time, you can do two inches up. But I would say no bigger than that because the more dirt surrounding your, your roots of your plant, uh, the more likely you can get root rot because all of that water is being held on to the soil but not the roots and then all you have is a plant sitting in so soggy soil so you want to be careful like i've mentioned in a lot of my videos before when you repot uh make sure you don't pot up too big because that can dr literally drown the plant so when you repot you can always add a boost to your soil like fertilizer or coffee grounds that are used uh tea grounds that are used tea leaves that are used um, you can also um, 
uh, check for pests when you um, when you repot as well. So repotting depends on um, honestly, it doesn't de depend on the season for me. From my experience, I have repotted in every season and they still grow. So um, that could be different for you. So I would just uh, do an experiment, maybe buy a small little pothos that's like you know not too expensive, and then just um, when you think it's time to repot, just repot it and see what happens. But um, there's no really rhyme or reason uh, or uh, anything against repotting them in certain seasons because I haven't had, me, myself, I haven't had any problems with repotting no matter what the season is. So let's move on to the next tip. Okay. So um, tip number six. So tip number six is propagation. So people want to know if a pothos can be propagated and if so, how can you propagate? So be a yes a pothos can be propagated very very easily um and two um or b whichever one i said <laughs> um this um i've shown you actually i've given you i made a video on my cebu blue pothos how to propagate a cebu blue pothos so check that video out and it'll show you give you direct directions on how to propagate and that goes with pretty much a hundred percent of all pothos and 100% of all trailing philodendron. But this is right here, a pothos that I am propagating. And as you can see, once you stick these things in water, they grow. And some people use a different medium. So they use such as uh, sphagnum moss or some, some people directly direct, um, uh, propagate direct dirt and soil. I haven't had experience with that, so I don't know how that works. But some people actually do it and um, they propagate and they get um, they get roots. So basically you just take a, um, a pothos, cut it at the node, and then cut it right above a node, or yeah, above a node, and then you just stick, for me, you just stick it in water. And that's water propagation. I gave you guys that video. Uh, check the video out for more information. But yes, you can propagate a pothos and it goes for all pothos. This is a pothos in joy and this is a Cebu blue pothos in here and my all time favorite pothos, um, the golden pothos. These are so easy to propagate if you look at all the roots and things like that, but yes. Now some of your some of your clippings will not survive, but 98% of the time, the clippings do survive. But yes, the pothos can be propagated and you can make more babies. So let's move on. Okay, so tip, uh, care tip number seven. Um, the way you can tell that your pothos is healthy. So there are signs of a healthy pothos and there are signs of a non-healthy pothos. So the signs of a healthy pothos are just these if you look at it the leaves are nice and crispy um, on different types of pothos the leaves are standing straight up they're shiny if you could look at that that's how you can tell they're standing straight up that's how you can tell the health of your pothos now several signs of an unhealthy pothos um an unhealthy pothos will show different types of signs. So one sign will be yellowing leaves. So from my experience, a pothos that has yellowing leaves, that means you have given it too much water. So if you're looking at your pothos and your pothos have yellow leaves, that means it's too much water. Another sign of yellowing leaves could be just of age as well. So if your plant is a mature plant and you see some of the leaves that are close to the, to the soil, on the vines that are close to the soil and they're yellowing and they're really big, that could also be a sign of old age and it's just time to remove that leaf. However, if you notice that your pothos, your soil is soggy or there's there's yellowing leaves maybe down the vine in the middle somewhere, like up here somewhere, I would check your watering because the majority of the time that is called that is caused from too much water. Uh, care tip number two, um, if you have browning leaves. Now, a pothos may be just as healthy, just the, the, the leaves are just as crispy. Look at this beautiful note, oh my gosh. <laughs> just as crispy, I mean, um, yeah, just as crispy, but then you have some browning leaves on here somewhere, literally like the leaves are browning and shriveled all the way up completely and it's just like 
oh my gosh, you go and pluck it off. Um, that could be a sign of underwatering, even though your plant can still be crispy because like we mentioned earlier that the pothos can uh, take drought. They do handle drought very well. However, they will give you signs that they're going to need some water soon. And that sign is sometimes they'll send out, I mean, some of their leaves will literally dry up and fall off and be brown, even though the rest of the plant is still crispy. So that is what, one thing you wanna do with that is you want to check your pot. You wanna take your pot and lift it up and check the weight of your plant. If you become a, a, a intermediate to expert level, you can pick up your plant and you can say, mm, I watered her two weeks ago. She's very light. She's got browning leaves over here. Okay, it might be time for watering. Um, another thing is if you don't, if you're not quite sure, just get you a water meter. That's the easiest way for, definitely for beginners. Just get you a water meter, stick it down in there, it'll tell you that your water need, that your plant needs to be watered. Um, once you become expert level, like a lot of us, you can just pick up your plant and go, hmm, yeah, she needs watering. Or you stick your finger down into the soil to maybe your, your second knuckle here, and you can test and fill around and say, hmm, yeah, she needs water. Um, another sign of uh, an unhealthy plant would be browning edges maybe, browning edges. So if you have a, like this right here, this is a sign of something that could have gone, something, something could have happened. So this could be a few results. Either it was burned by the sun or um, it, was, it has low humidity, like there needs to be a little bit more humidity in the, in the atmosphere or too much fertilizer. And um, those are one of the signs that you can tell that your plant has some kind of something going on. Um, I'm not too familiar with fungus uh, diseases of the roots, but sometimes that happens, but I'm not familiar with that with pothos, so I'm not pretty sure. Um, and those are some of the signs of a unhealthy. So the next care tip will be care tip number eight, and that would be pests. Um, I recently came into the knowledge of uh, pests about maybe two or three years ago so I, when i was growing up i never knew anything about these and i had them in my other homes i never knew about these pests it wasn't until 2014 to 2016 i believe when i learned about um pests so some of the pests that i've seen that come with the only pests that i've really seen come with these pothos are fungus gnats and i believe that's because they're tropical plants and they have to have moist soil but not soggy um, and um, the fungus gnats, they love that. So that's the only the only thing I've seen with these uh, pothos are fungus gnats. Um, other people have had said they had um, different things like mealybugs or thrips or um, other things. I pray I never get those. But the only thing I've seen them, they are notorious for fungus gnats and it's only because of the soil. So um, yeah, you wanna be careful. So the next tip we have also is um, safety. So these are actually, uh, pothos are actually deemed as a poisonous plant. So they are harmful to pets and to children. So <clears throat> if, you would, uh, if you have pets or children, which I have both, um, you want to uh, be very careful around, have, be careful around your pets and your children with these plants. Do not so, when it comes to pothos, there are different varieties and different uh, types of pothos, and they come in different sizes as well. So this is the funnest part of this video for me because I get to see all of my, some of my favorite babies. Now, all of these are my favorite because they're all pothos, um, but um, I get to show you guys what they are. So there are different types of pothos. Some are not even deemed as pothos. They're actually a different species or a variety or something but um they just call them pothos so um <coughs> excuse me let's go with uh with what we know as pothos so our first variety that i love is the golden pothos this is what i grew up around this is what i first knew about pothos i didn't know anything other than these i absolutely love these these are great viners like all the other ones they grow so fast tremendously fast you guys these grow like that's why they call them devil's ivy 
because they grow very, very fast. These are deemed to be an invasive species in certain um, states, like in Florida. These do um, tend to grow up the barks of trees and get massively large. I mean, they get the size of a human's torso. You know, they, they these things get huge. And so um, you want to be very careful, especially if you're in a southern climate, especially in like the Florida region. You want to be careful with these because if you toss these out, they can grow to be like just ginormous. And then they shade out the other plants and kill them off. That's why they're an invasive species. But people are after them. I'm one of them. <laughs> people are after the, we call them gigantic pothos or the giant pothos. And they're just basically mature. And um, they get so large that they actually get finish, finistrations in their leaves, like um, the Monstera Deliciosa. They can look like variegated Monstera Deliciosas, but they're pothos. And I'll give you some samples of some of the large leaves, even though they're not, as, not even as half as large as what they could get out in the wild. But these are some examples of some of the leaves, how large they can get. But this is nothing. This is absolutely nothing, you guys, compared to the size they get in the wild. This is actually this big compared to what they get in the wild. So this is some of the signs of um, a mature uh, pothos. Um, that's a golden pothos. Let's stick with the golden pothos. And like I said, golden pothos, like this big one here, this is pearl. Um, they vine, you guys. They get very, very, very long. Um, and... Their vines go everywhere. I put a tomato steak on her because they get thick and they also vine as well. So um, you wanna be, you wanna, if you get one of these, just be prepared to have it vine and just reach across your home, okay? Uh, sticking with the golden pothos, let's show you here other signs of uh, the large how big the leaves can get so that leaf i showed you guys was nothing this one i bought in the store and if you can see look at the size of this leaf hopefully you can see it but it's bigger than my hand it's like two of my hands this is beautiful but that's absolutely nothing compared to what they can get in the wild and look at this these leaves I was just amazed at the size of these leaves you guys so you know I had to get it right <laughs> yes so let's move on to our next variety our next variety is the Manjula pothos now we already talked about this just recently we talked about what the Manjula is the Manjula is a cross between Marble Queen and um, Pothos enjoy. They have distinct markings. I am going to do an experiment with these. I'm going to stake these up and see if I can get them to get as big as the golden pothos. These are a newer variety. Um, these are patent protected, so you can't propagate these. You can't sell these off individually. You can buy them in the store, but you can't propagate. Only the people who have a license, I believe, can do that. And um, yeah, these are just gorgeous. I love the markings on this plant. The next variety we have is the, this is actually a Scandapsis. So this is not a Pothos, but it looks like a Pothos, so they just call it a Pothos, but it's in the Scandapsis. But I put this in here because I love it. It has the velvet leaves, and it has different markings as well, but they say it's a Pothos, so I'm a Pothos girl, so I got it. <laughs> so I get them. But yeah, this is a silver satin Pothos, as they call it. And um, yeah, you can look these up. I should be able to put all the names up for you guys. And even with those, these, they're different varieties of the Scandapsis Pictus. This is a, another one, and I think this is the Argerius. I believe that one was a Silvery and This was an Argerius. And then this one is an Exotica. This is also a Satin Pothos. Well, Scandapsis, but they call it a Satin Pothos, and this is an Exotica. And as you can see, you can see how large the leaves get. Isn't that cool? That is just amazing, you guys. So another version of Pothos is fairly new to me, is the Neon Pothos. So this is another variation of the Golden Pothos, just Neon. And some of them come in a variegated Neon as well. 
Isn't that cool? And they're, de they're exactly the same. They're just neon compared to the golden pothos. Um, another variety you guys just recently seen is the Cebu Blue Pothos. They say this is not a pothos, but they classify it as a pothos. But the Cebu Blue Pothos, and it trails just like its cousin or sister or whatever. <laughs> so the Cebu Blue Pothos. Isn't that amazing? Another variety we just showed you is the right here, this pothos. This is a, um, what is this? Oh my gosh, my brain just stops, you guys. <sighs> Not Marble Queen. This is a, um, what you call it, pothos. Pothos Enjoy. This is a pothos Enjoy right here. And it trails and it grips just like another the other regular pothos. Another variety is the Marble Queen pothos. And this one has different variations too. There's a darker Marble Pothos, Marble Queen Pothos, and a light Marble Queen Pothos right here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> then you have the Pearls and Jade Pothos. The Pearls and Jade Pothos right here. And this one actually has speckles. What the Marble, uh, the Pothos Enjoy doesn't have, this one does. This has speckles. So this is a Pearls and Jade. Pothos. And I think that's all the varieties I have with me. But oh, no, it's not. Where's my other baby? Oh, there she is. And her. And this is the regular Jade Pothos. So I believe this is the original Pothos, which they come in Jade. And then you cross all of these other ones. And that's how you get the variegations with the different special ones. I don't quite know what the golden pothos comes from, but I know that I believe the original pothos is a jade pothos. So very quickly, the pothos that are uh, that exist that I know of are called the jade pothos, golden pothos, marble queen, neon, jessenia. That's the pothos that I do not have, which is what is on my wish list and what I want. Uh, the mandula, the pearls and jade, the pothos and joy, the silver satin, the cebu blue. There's also called a Shangri-La, Shangri-La Pothos, and it's one more Pothos, I forget the name of it, but it's called the Crinkle Pothos or the Shark Pothos or something, and those are three Pothos that I do not have that that's on my wish list and I really want. So, um, yeah, that's it, you guys. All right, you guys, so there, there it is. That's all for today. I hope I covered everything that um, uh, you guys needed to know about pothos. Um, please sound off in the comments below if you have any questions about pothos or if you have any um, thing that I may have missed. But I just want to thank you all so, so much for joining me. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. Um, if you are new to my channel, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and press the bell notification so that you can be notified anytime I upload anything. And as always, you guys, don't forget that I love you and God loves you too. You guys be blessed. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.